Hey everyone, I'm T. Frank and I've been using the Canon M100 for the past 10 months. In this video, I wanna update you on my experience with this camera. I've been using it mainly for video, but I've also taken photos with it as well. So in this video, I wanna tell you some things I like about this camera and some things that I dislike. The size is still one of my favorite things that I love about this camera. I've mentioned it in a few videos, but this is usually the camera that I take with me because it's so small and compact. The 15 to 45 millimeter does make it protrude a bit in the front, but it's still a pretty small camera. And when paired with the 22 millimeter, it's almost comparable to that of a point and shoot. I find myself throwing this in my camera bag more often than not. And I recently had to make an unplanned trip back home. And this was the camera that I took with me. Now this next like is both a pro and a con, and I'll explain the con a little bit later in this video, but I love that this camera takes interchangeable lenses. This is my main reason for picking this camera over the G7X Mark II. At the moment, I currently own the 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens and the 22 millimeter. I also have an adapter and I can use all of my EF and EFS lenses with this camera. Depending on what I'm shooting, I can change the look just by swapping out the lens. Dual pixel autofocus is another feature that I absolutely love on this camera. This is one of my many reasons I decided to pick this camera up and I haven't been disappointed. The feature really isn't a gimmick and I've had great success with it. There has only been a few occasions where I've had issues with the autofocus and being that video is still relatively new to me, it probably was more of a user error. Another thing that I like about this camera is the simplicity. Before purchasing this camera, I watched several reviews and a lot of them faulted this camera for not having dials and as many buttons as other cameras. The camera is targeted at beginners and if you're a beginner, you really don't wanna be overwhelmed when you're trying to learn your new camera, yet you do wanna have that ability to grow with your camera. And honestly, I think the M100 does just that. You can do a lot on the M100, you just have to go into the menu of the camera, which can be annoying at times, but it's still beneficial to have some of those same features that you have on a little bit pricier of a camera. For example, you can actually go into the menu and select the different profile to shoot in. You can actually set up your frame rate. Note that this camera does shoot in 1080p at 60 frames per second. You can actually go in the settings and turn this on raw, so you can shoot in raw. And you can also shoot in aperture priority and shutter priority modes and the list goes on, but they're all buried in the menu. The next thing that I really like about this camera is the flip up screen. And I know this is gonna be subjective to your personal taste, but I find that when I'm vlogging, if I'm looking up at the screen, I don't think it looks as awkward as looking off to the side. I know that you're supposed to look directly into the lens of the camera, but this is something that I struggle with and I may have to pull a Casey Neistat. I've also used this camera for vertical video and I think that the flip up screen looks a little less odd than the fully articulating screen on my M50 and my SL2 when I turn it to the side. Over the past few months, I've also found that I really appreciate the placement of the SD card slot. On the SL2 and the M50, the SD card slot is at the bottom with the battery. So if the camera is on a tripod, I actually have to take it off to get access to my SD card. The M100 has a separate section for the SD card, so this is something that I truly appreciate and love on this camera. Overall, I think this camera takes some pretty good video. This is a camera that I still use from time to time on the channel as my second angle for the most part. If paired with some pretty good glass, I think you can get some good pics also. So now that I've talked about the things that I like, I wanna go ahead and talk to you guys about the things that I dislike. The first thing that I dislike about this camera is the build. Due to the price tag, I expected the plastic bill, but what I did not expect was the lack of a grip. I think that Canon could have put a similar grip to the one that's on a G7X Mark II. The M100 is super tiny and it has no grip, so I'm always paranoid that I will drop it. To solve this problem that I was having, I actually bought Canon's expensive face jacket, which adds a grip to the camera. However, when using it, I lose access to my battery, SD card slot, and a few other things. So recently, another solution for me has been the Peak Design hand grip and neck strap, which when shooting handheld, this has saved my camera on a few occasions, so be sure to check out the links in the description for more information on both of these products. The next thing that I don't like about the M100 is that it doesn't have a mic jack. If you're close to the camera, the M100 has some pretty decent audio that you can adjust manually in the settings. However, if you're far away from this camera, you'll need to record the audio separate and sync it in post if you wanna get really great audio. 
Another gripe that I have with the Canon M100 is that it only records for 10 minutes when choosing 60 frames per second. I was actually recording a video a few times in 60 frames per second and the camera would just stop recording and I found that it was because I had been shooting for 10 minutes. I wasn't aware of this limitation prior to buying the camera so keep this in mind. For me this is annoying but not a deal breaker. I'm usually only shooting 60 frames per second when I want to slow down my footage and I normally don't shoot 60 frames per second more than 10 minutes. Another thing that I dislike about this camera and the Canon EOS M line in general is the lack of lens options. I believe that they only have about five lenses for this line. Yes, you can use an adapter, but with an adapter and an EF or EFS lens, it makes the setup a lot bigger than I want it to be. Another thing to note is that the 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens has a lock on the lens that requires you to unlock it before you can shoot video or pics. Let's just say that I had no clue what this was when I first got it, and it can be annoying at times, especially when you're trying to get that shot. And my last dislike about this camera is the stabilization. The camera does not have in-body stabilization. It has digital stabilization, which isn't too great in my opinion. Even with the stabilized 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens and a small tripod, the footage can still be pretty jumpy. When I'm trying to shoot smoother footage while moving, I'll usually shoot in a higher frame rate and slow it down. I'll try to stabilize and post without losing too much of the quality. If you have this camera, let me know in the comment section what you like and dislike about it. Please also let me know if you guys have any questions about this camera. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm T Frank and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.